Hello, this is Edwin Epperson. You have probably been referred to this short video by a private investor. And we wanted to make this as easy and as simple a process to understand. You see, private lending is an incredible investing method. If you have seen our previous video, Overview of Private Lending, then you understand the incredible opportunities that are available. Today I want to cover exactly how private lending works, the specifics, the inner workings, so that you can utilize this powerful investing method to truly diversify your portfolio and create measurable long-term growth for you and your family's financial future. Today we will cover our team and their roles, but this time we will explore exactly what they do and when they do it. We will cover using other people's time, also known as leverage, and why it is so important to utilize leverage in this investing method. We will cover the cost of private lending because everyone wants to know what is it going to cost me, yes? And last but not least, we will evaluate a typical deal that we would fund. So let's learn how you can start using this powerful method today. You see, as a private investor, you get a huge network of borrowers, men and women who are buying properties at steep discounts. They come to us with their deals and they ask us to fund these deals. We can pick and choose which deals meet our guidelines and lend only to those deals. So once we find a borrower who has a deal that meets our underwriting criteria and holds up under the scrutiny of our policies, we come to an agreement with our borrower. This agreement is called our terms. And these terms set forth the parameters of this one specific deal. We then call our broker who is licensed by both federal and state laws to legally process the paperwork and manage the deal till the day of closing. We pass the terms of this deal to our broker and have them contact our borrower. Once the broker contacts the borrower, he begins to draft the paperwork. Now there are two documents that are absolutely necessary in private lending. The first is called the promissory note. This note is our terms in writing. This note is not recorded, meaning it is not public knowledge and cannot be found at the county's Record of Deeds office. However, it is a legally binding document that will be honored in court. The promissory note stipulates that the borrower will pay a set amount over a set period of time. The second document is just as important. It is called the Mortgage or Deed of Trust. It is a legally binding document, also known as a security instrument, that ties the borrower to the actual real property and promissory note so that should the borrower fail to uphold the terms of the promissory note, we, the private investor, will get the property. Once the terms are written up, a date for closing is set. In private lending, a date for closing could be anywhere from less than five days up to 30 days. Well, we like deals which close in about two weeks. Now we begin our due diligence. The title company also begins theirs. It's called title insurance or a title commitment. This makes sure that the property does not have any unforeseen liens before we go to closing. If there is anything that is discovered, we are notified, therefore allowing us plenty of time to decide what to do, whether to proceed, renegotiate the terms, or even back out. During our due diligence, there are two primary activities that are conducted during this time frame. One is we order an appraisal. We do not accept a borrower's appraisal because they could have connections with the appraiser. With the appraisal, we are given a comps list, which shows us what comparable properties have sold for in the past three months. We receive pictures of the property, and we receive a current market value for the property. This ensures that the borrower is buying the property below our requirements, which we will cover shortly. The second requirement is an inspection. Now an inspection is typically reserved for when a private investor is not only funding the purchase of a property but also the rehab. We receive a lot of the same paperwork from an inspector as we would an appraiser, with one major difference, structural issues. An inspection ensures we know exactly what is involved with the property and if there are any structural issues that could affect the after repair value or the ARV and the amount needed for rehab. However, for our examples today, we will not be covering funding the rehab portion of the loan. After our due diligence is done, it's a matter of waiting for closing day. Our broker will open escrow, which is a function of closing. Escrow is typically opened at the title company that performed the title insurance or title commitment. It is a neutral account that is open for closing and closed the day of closing. Imagine it as a vault, if you will. 
Now that escrow is open, we go to closing. The following happens all in a matter of hours. Our broker sends the two documents, the promissory note and the mortgage, that are key to our deal into escrow, held by the title company. This is the last process our broker has to do with our deal. During the day of closing, the borrower deposits his down payment, if required, and he pays all closing costs. You may not know, but the borrower's money is at the most risk in real estate investing. As the private investor, we deposit our loan amount, the most safe money in private lending, into escrow. And that's it. After our borrower signs the mortgage and the promissory note, several things happen. We, as the private investor, receive the original, signed promissory note. Remember, it's not recorded and not public record, yet it is legally binding. The borrower is recorded on the title and signs the mortgage. They are sent to the county, Record of Deeds Office, in which the property is located to be recorded. This recording officially binds the borrower to the property. We receive a copy of the mortgage, not the original. All this is organized and executed by the title company, starting the day of closing. Now, on the day of closing, a servicing company is requested by us to service the loan. This means the borrower sends their monthly payment to the servicing company, and then the servicing company sends the appropriate payments to all parties involved with making the loan. The servicing company serves several key roles in the maintenance of the loan, accountability of monthly payments being the most important. So there still may be a question as to why we use a team instead of doing all of this ourselves. The most important reason is we need to fall within the state and federal laws and regulations, including the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. Never assume anything about private lending. Seek the advice of a real estate attorney. That's what we have done and continue to do to stay compliant. To be successful in private lending, we have to leverage other people's time. Without their expertise, experience, education, and qualifications, doing this business by yourself would be extremely difficult, if not illegal, in most cases. We always consult our team of professionals within the realm of the lending industry to ensure we are legally and ethically compliant. Our team is invaluable to us, and we would never be able to close more safe and secure loans without their input, help, and expertise. Now I am sure you've been thinking this question ever since we started talking about all the team members involved with bringing a deal from start to finish. Let me reveal something that may give you an aha moment. In almost every other type of investment method, we, the investor, pay for all of the services rendered for that type of method. Well, in private lending, the borrower, yes, the borrower pays for everything. Remember what was discussed earlier, the borrower's money is in the most risky position in real estate investing, and this is why. What do we, the private investor, pay for? Nothing. We sit back and collect passive monthly paychecks. So let's look at a nice, clean, secure loan that we would do. This is a common deal for us, and I want to share with you how it looks so you can see the numbers. In our first example, we have a property that our borrower is going to buy. The as-is value, meaning today its value is $180,000. We have our comps in the area that state homes like this are selling for $250,000. Now, one of our rules that we never break is we never lend more than 65% of the value of the property. So in this case, we are not lending on the $250,000. That's a future gain, an expected return that is not yet realized, also known as gambling. We gauge our deals on today's values. So we take the as is and only lend 65% of that value. This calculation gives us our MLTV, or max loan to value. Can you see the incredible protection that we make sure we have in place before we even go to closing? We already have over 60000 in protective equity. In this example, we will say the borrower got the property under contract for exactly our MLTV. We can also see that the borrower is bringing 40000 to the deal in the rehab cost. This is money they have. We are not lending this money to them. They must have this money available. Now this slide is basically what the borrower is looking at. Why it is important to us? Because we want to know if we take the property back due to foreclosure, we have a clear grasp of what has been put into the property and what we could possibly sell it for. In this example, the borrower has the possibility to make close to 90,000 minus the seller's closing cost 
when they sell the property. Following through with example two, we see that because the borrower made the down payment, it affected the future equity. So between example one and two, has there been any change in the safety of our position on our loan? No, there hasn't. As a private investor, we only have 117,000 out on this loan in both examples. What has changed? Let's take a look. Do you see the risk the borrower has taken? You can see in both examples, we only lent 117,000. In both examples, the borrower paid for the rehab of 40,000. However, the future equity dropped from 92,000 in the first example to 60,000 in the second example. Why? Well, because the borrower made a down payment of an extra 33,000 just so that we would do the loan. So, because they put a down payment on their property, we are actually in a safer position because they have that much more to lose. Do you see why this investing method is so incredible and provides a much safer return than other forms of investing? Now, I would be remiss if I did not say that being a private investor does not have its own risk, a downside. Foreclosure is a possibility, even with all of our rules and policies in place. However, as the private investor, you have the power to mitigate the chance and risk of foreclosure happening. You are in control, period. So in this example, the borrower paid for one, two, three months following closing. However, in the fourth month, they did not pay. What happens? Well, remember that company that we hired, yet the borrower paid for their services? That's right. The servicing company. Well, many servicing companies have a direct line to a foreclosure attorney that specializes in protecting investors. They actually will contact the attorney and you to let everyone know a payment has been missed. Then the attorney will initiate the foreclosure process. And that's it. It's as simple as that. A phone call and the professionals we have on our team begin to operate with proficiency within their realm of expertise. But you know what? Foreclosure is not necessarily bad for us. Why? Let's continue with our example we have been using. If we get the property back in foreclosure, yes, we may not receive our monthly interest payments for a short period of time. However, look at these numbers. The property, as it sat three or four months ago, was at 180000 We only lent 117000 on that property. That's 63000 of protective equity we have in this deal. Now, what if the borrower had made their repairs and something had just happened in their lives and they had to let the property go, which unfortunately can happen? Well, remember that ARV, the after repair value number? If the borrower had completed any rehab, the value goes up, meaning we can get even more for the property if we take it back in foreclosure. Today we have covered several items. Let's recap quickly. We covered in detail the process for getting and evaluating a deal. We covered our team and we made a very clear and precise case for why we need our team. They make this business possible and exciting. Remember, the best part is the borrower pays for all their services. We went over the transparency of this investing method. No smoke and mirrors here. Our documentation is recorded for public record and review. Lastly, we went over the absolute worst case scenario, a foreclosure. However, because of our team and our rules that we absolutely never break, we can see how much more secure this investment method is above all others. I hope you have learned something new and that your eyes have been open to the potential and profitability within this business. My name is Edwin and I thank you for joining me today. If you have more questions as to how this works, please contact the private investor who referred you to this recording. I promise they are as excited about this opportunity as you are now. May all of your ventures be successful this year.